Hey everybody, Jason Atkinson here, author of Live Like an Athlete. In today's shorts video, I'm going to be talking about the importance of nutrient timing and specifically when to eat carbs to burn fat faster. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm a 45-year-old stubborn fat loss expert. I was featured in national news media publications, including Success Magazine, for losing 75 pounds and I've managed to maintain a new healthy weight for more than five years now. I was also a runner-up in the first ever largest Body for Life competition, largest transformation competition in the history of fitness. That's how I got into this back in uh, about 20 years ago, back when I was about 25 years old. So today, uh, we're going to talk about, like I said, the importance of carb timing. Um, the, more, the more you tune into the popular media, the more you're going to hear carbs are bad news. Um, it's not true. We have three macronutrients, uh, protein, carbohydrate, and fat. All those are important. And specifically today, I want to talk about the importance of post-training carbohydrate. So what I'm doing here right now is a midweek carb up. I've been carb depleted uh, two days in a row. So Saturday was a high carb, cheat day, refeed. Uh, it was a weekend. Sunday was a low carb day. Worked in a little 20 hour intermittent fasting there. Uh, training Monday morning in a depleted state and again followed by a 20 hour fast and I had my last meal at 9 p.m. it's now 9 42 a.m. so we're looking at a 12 hour overnight fast I uh, just had some black coffee this morning just got back from the gym did an hour workout and now it's time for some post training recovery so over here I've got uh, one whole egg and five whites and I actually have a scoop of uh, a whey protein powder that I'm going to have along with this. The exact brand doesn't matter. This is uh, Pro Performance Whey from GNC. That's the closest to a generic that you can get. It's about $25 for a two pound tub. Uh, it's very economical. This is a concentrate blend, so it's a little higher in carbohydrate. If you want zero carb or very low carb, do a pure isolate. It's going to cost a little bit more. But with this one, uh, for what we're doing, it's fine. So I've thrown in, I'm going to make a little omelet here. I've got, uh, like I said, one whole egg, five whites. So I'm looking for about 10 grams of fat with this meal. So five grams of fat are going to be found in the, the yolk. I actually have uh, no problem with dairy. So just for flavor, I like to throw in a little slice of cheese with that omelet and, and melt that. If you don't want to do the dairy, um, you can take out the whey, you can substitute that for another type of protein powder, uh, plant-based option, which is not really as high quality as, uh, as a whey. Or you could do a beef protein, um, if you so desire. I've never tried those, so I don't know about the flavor on it, but those options are available. And then along with this, I'm having a half of a baked potato here. And in my coffee, I have actually put... A tablespoon of raw honey, raw, whoops, raw, hello, <laughs> raw unfiltered honey. Uh, so that's got about 20 grams of carb, and then the half of baked potato there is about another 20 grams. So we're looking at about 40 grams of carbohydrate post training, and about 40 to 45 grams of protein here with the omelet and the whey protein. So what happens when you're in a carb depleted state like what I'm describing? I've been eating very low carb for the past two days, uh, about 20 to 25 grams of carbs per day. So that's a uh, very low level, ketogenic levels. And what that does is it allows that stored carbohydrate in the muscles and the liver, which is called glycogen, to get depleted or lowered. And that's accelerated by training in a fasted state, like I mentioned earlier. And uh, what that does is it, it primes your body to uptake the nutrients that you put in here. So post-training is the best time to take in your carbohydrates. But again, you might want to cycle those carbs in. Um, again, what I'm doing here is a midweek. Today's Tuesday. It's my day off usually, so I'm home. So I'm going to eat a little more often throughout the day. Wednesday and Thursday, I'm going to go back onto an intermittent fasting protocol where, where I'm fasting up to 20 hours a day consuming all my calories for the day in a four-hour window. And then on Friday and Saturday, I'm actually going to ramp up the carbs and the calories again. Uh, and what that does is it sort of keeps the body from achieving homeostasis. Um, basically, your body adapts to whatever you do most of the time. So whatever seems normal to your body, that's what it's going to strive to maintain. So 
by zigzagging those calories and zigzagging the carbohydrates like I'm talking about, cycling them in strategically around the training and throughout the week, I'm creating an overall calorie deficit. Um, so basically my midline calorie intake, my basal metabolic rate, I'm burning about 21, 2200 calories a day at rest. Uh, if you throw training on top of that, it's probably about 2500. You know, I'm just guessing. So a baseline day for me, I'm looking for about 1800 calories, which puts me in a mild calorie deficit. And that's what you really need for weight loss. If you're going to achieve and sustain weight loss, you're going to have to be consuming less energy than you're expending, expending more energy than you're consuming, whichever way you want to look at that equation. Otherwise, it's not going to work. There's no macronutrient tweak that you can do that will override the basic law of thermodynamics, which is energy balance. But a baseline day for me is about 1,800 calories. So what I'll do is on the weekends, I'll double that. I'll go for about 3,600 calories a day. And then, like I said, four days a week, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I'm doing about half that or about a 900 calorie day. And the way I achieve that is by cutting the meal frequency in half and only having two or three meals a day instead of five or six. So it makes it a little easier because I'm just going a longer period of time without eating and then again, eating all the calories for the day in a compressed window. So that allows me to create a huge calorie deficit four days a week. Come back to midline, midweek, and then back on the weekends, double the calories as normal. So what that does is it resets your metabolism, resets your leptin levels. That's a hormone that's involved in releasing fat stores. And it keeps your insulin low and stable throughout the week, but then spikes the insulin strategically, like I'm talking about, post-training and on the weekends, to drive the aminos into the muscle cells so you can recover from the training and produce muscle growth, which in turn is going to help your body burn and metabolize fat more efficiently. So if you like this video, click subscribe below, hit the like button, share it, and please click on the link in the profile here and pick up a copy of my book, Live Like an Athlete. That's got all my tips and tricks of how I was able to lose 75 pounds and maintain a new healthy weight again for five years now. So these are tried and true. They're not gimmicks, but they work in the real world. And I'll be back soon with more videos. Thanks for listening.